Mother, Father, God, Creator that you are, we are humbled and grateful for this time that we will spend together. We await battalions of angels to prepare the way for Holy Mother Mary, her Son, Jesus Christ, and our favorite angel, St. Michael. As always, we request the presence of St. Hildegard, St. Catherine of Siena, St. Therese, and my beautiful friend, St. Bernadette. We will keep our gaze only upon God, and we seal this room so that only the light may enter. And we request that all healing that is done at this time be done gently. And so it is. We ask only that our work is pleasing in your heart. That's what I ask. And so in this book, we attempt to bring forth the message of the joy of death. And the fact that the method of crossing always has a purpose. The method of crossing is chosen not just for the individual who returns home, but rather for everyone who is in the sphere of that individual. It is to have an influence of some sort on everyone who has close contact with the one who is coming home. The one you call John is present, blesses our group with his presence. He has asked that several of us speak with him. We would speak summarily on what you have called the elusive gift of tragedy. It is felt that this path is one that might help many lift from their fear, might help them understand in a more personal fashion what really happens when we transition and why we choose the methods that we do and the fact that we do choose them. Sometimes when we see what happens, it can be very difficult. Every thought that you think and every choice that you make is you creating yourself. You are creating yourself either in the direction you desire, godliness, or in the direction you do not desire, ungodliness. Most of them believe the question they want to know is, how can I get something that will make me happy? Why am I so confused? If you can help them understand where their power comes from, they will not choose the exit I did. Now, we do not mean to say that you must worship. You must call it God. You must call them angels and masters. No. It is simply finding out the greater truth of life. And that truth is highly personalized. Now, we would speak about the epidemic of the drug issue that is so prevalent now in the United States. What we are talking about is using pharmaceuticals to escape the purpose. Whether that purpose is a hurt foot telling you you're not moving forward in the right direction, or a grieving heart telling you you need to find out what else there is in life besides the material. One of the reasons I crossed as I did was to scare the hell out of my friends. It is a high risk for a very high what message would you have for parents about whether or not to put a child that's already struggling with this into one of those places or just to bring spirituality into their life and hope for the best? If there is a sign of responsibility for self, then you question whether or not you put them in a facility such as the lockdown facility you mentioned. The second thing you look for is desire to heal. Now, 
these two of whom you spoke, they had the desire to heal, but it had become very, very weak. And the willingness to do whatever it took to heal was no longer there. One of the issues that kids deal with nowadays is the fact that everybody does it. And when you feel alone anyway, to then be told that you can no longer be with the friends, the only people you call friends because they do the drugs, is sometimes more than the individual child can take and much more than they are willing to give up. The two main criteria are responsibility, and you must remember it is not just words. It must be actions and consistent behavior. If the behavior making the changes is not consistent, it is not going to produce anything. So first you look at the responsibility, then you look at the desire, the intensity of the desire. It is time for the quiet majority to become unquiet until the quiet majority makes things too uncomfortable for this to continue it will continue there are many people on many different levels who are becoming the aroused no longer quiet majority the mother who will stand up to the principal at school and stomp her foot and say, no, this is not acceptable for my child. The one who will write a book from the death of her son. The one who will look at the child and say, no, it's not your friend's fault. You're the one who decided to do it. You will take responsibility for these consequences. These are all members of the no longer quiet majority. So a part of the change that we are now beginning to feel is the entire educational system shuddering. Imagine you have built a 200-story high building and it's facing in the wrong direction. We need to turn it around. Now, bottom line, when the attitude is that recreational drugs are simply not tolerated and not acceptable by more than 50% of the population, and they will speak up about this, then we will see a massive shift. You may say there is a component in Ritalin that would give a you might call it a matched frequency to the harsher drug. Remember, the quartz itself is a clarifier. And so what happens is what you call amplification is a fine-tuning of the vibrational frequencies. And that fine-tuning takes place within the, the quartz as the filter. 